G'day guys, welcome back again. I'm doing a flip and drag today on my 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter card, 12 by 16 inch. I'm going to use Floetrol as pouring medium and global paints. So we have this yellow is butter yellow, the blue is cool blue and the red is cool red. So I've mixed the paints three parts flow troll to one part paint. The red is quite a thick paint. I did have to add a little bit more flow troll to let it flow. Um, the paint sort of sits on top for a couple of seconds and then disappears. So that's the right thickness. Um, I'm using coconut milk hair serum in this for cells and I've put it into this little squeeze bottle it's much easier to put two drops in one two one two one and two try not to squeeze too hard or you'll find you'll have a whole stream coming out after your drop I'm going to stir these in a little bit more than usual because I want little cells. Don't know if that'll work or not. I've got my cup, I've got my big push pin. This is what I have underneath my canvases to keep them up off the table. So I'm going to use that to um, spear my paper cup. Okay, so let's go. Now the white the background I've made a lot thinner. It is four parts flow troll to one part paint. I'll layer the paints first and I think I'll start with the yellow. Pour that in. I'm just going to pour them in from up high so that they'll mix a little bit and we'll go red next just the primary colors because with red yellow and blue we're going to get orange and green as well in with the blue I'm not adding any white to the cup because we're going to have a lot of white on the background. All right, move that out of the way. Now the I'm just going to flood this card with the white. There's a lot of paint here. I did 200 grams of Floetrol. Lump in that to um, 50 grams of paint. I used this paint earlier this morning. Actually, no, it was yesterday, so it's been sitting and the dried paint around the outside sort of gone into the paint. Probably should have used a fresh one. I'm just going to um, spread the paint to the outside. I want most of the paint in the middle, the thickness of it, but I'm going to just spread some out to the edges. These little spatulas are great to use in your paintings. I use them a lot. I use them to cover my canvases on the sides. You can pick paint up with them and put it where you want it on the sides. So they're a very useful tool to have. So most of the paint is going to be in the middle. I do want just a little bit on the edges. In case paint doesn't go all the way to the edge and we have a little bit of negative space. That's okay too. I'm fine with negative space. The flip and drags. It's not your traditional flip and drag where you just have a little dragon type section in the middle. Um, I'm pretty much going for coverage over most of this card. So I'm going to start up here, let the paints mix for a minute. I'm going to just bring it up and down, up and down, and try and get good coverage. I'm 
I'll just poke that twice. And just gently float the cup over the top of the paint. And that's it. Don't want to torch a lot because as you can see there's already heaps of cells coming up. Um, maybe just over here a little bit where I've gone over it again with my cup. And just where the white is to get those cells up under the white. So I don't want to tilt a lot. Um, because the cells will get stretched, but I do need to cover this area here where it's a little bit bald, where my cup's rubbed up against the the um, card underneath. So I'll try and go down that way and into that corner, and that will probably be enough. I don't want to overstretch these cells. As you can see, the coconut milk's hair serum is very, very strong. I've got two drops in each cup, and I've got a massive cells. So um, next time, I think I'll cut back and just see what happens with one drop per colour. Because I would like some negative space between the cells. I don't like just a mass of cells. I keep saying I'm going to use less oil, but I don't do it. <laughs> I will have to try and do it. So moving slowly down to the bottom. And I don't mind if my corners stay white. That's fine. Just going to try and get rid of that bit there. With this type of pour, um, you sort of have to say, well, I'll take the good with the bad. If you're not terribly happy with one section, you just really need to leave it because the more you tilt, the more you'll ruin the rest of your composition. So up here is really pretty. You don't want to tilt too much down there because you'll lose what's going on up here. So you have to be careful. Going off to this end down here a bit now. Get rid of that off the edge there. And then, we'll see how I go. I might move this bit up here just a touch. There's a lot of paint on, on this. Um, and I'm not going to worry about trying to tilt it all off. It's just going to be thick paint on here. It'll take maybe a week to dry, but that's okay. I don't want to tilt it anymore and get too much paint off. It's amazing what colors you can get with those three primaries. There's an array of different colors in here. Light green, dark green, Reds, light orange, dark orange, yellows, blues, purples, a bit of everything. Nearly there. Okay. Get the weight back. You can see this is the area here that's moving. You can see where the majority of the paint is up here. This isn't moving very much, so that tells me that there's not as much thick paint there. But where this is moving, there's a lot of paint there. I'm just going to try and round out these cells here, which have got a bit squashed. Just slowly bring them back. Try and get them more into a circular shape. These ones down here as well have got a bit squished. But keep an eye on everything else as well. There's no point having these nice and circular if you're losing the shape of everything else. Let's 
try and get rid of that big orange blob down the bottom there. See, these are starting to stretch a bit here now, so I have to be careful. I just have to leave it. Just bring the weight back into the middle and then I'll leave it. It's very bright, that's for sure. I probably could have, with my cup, taken my time and gone maybe one, two, three, four, five times with my cup, four or five times. I think I only did three, so maybe four next time. And I would actually cover my edges more with the cup. And then I wouldn't have to tilt as much don't really like what's going on up here, but I don't know if I can get rid of that or not. I don't think I can. Okay, I'm just going to torch a little bit um, the white edge there and see if I can get anything to come up. More cells popping up under through the white. So overall, pretty happy with it. There's a couple of things I would change next time. Um, maybe a little bit less blue um, and less silicone. I'll try with one drop per cup and try and spread my cups further along. Take my time. I kind of rushed and there's no reason why you have to rush really. You can take your time, do your swirl, but we do tend to rush and just get it over and done with. So. Um, Yep, happy with that. And I've got my white corners, so that's fine. Let's put a little bit more white on this corner. Okay. If you do use these cards, Make sure every day you go and loosen the bottom, otherwise the paint will stick and um, it'll get stuck to the, the cake tray. So loosen it every day as the paint's drying or take it off and put it on a piece of um, non-stick paper and let it dry there. That's what I tend to do. Alright, I'll take you in for a close-up. See you next time. Bye for now.